Hi XR developers! In this video, we're going to look at the hand tracking from Meta. We're going to set up hand tracking in our device and in our Unity scene, and then we're going to look at how to interact with physics with our hands, as well as read simple input such as the pinch gesture. As you know by now, and have seen from Apple, there is a lot of emphasis on the pinch gesture, and we can create many unique interactions with the pinch. Also, we're going to use the hand pointer data from Meta, which is going to allow us to create our own ray interactors. If you like this type of videos, please take a second to like or subscribe to this channel, and please check out my Patreon to get access to all the source code of these tutorials. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to join our Discord channel, where we are happy to help. And now, let's get started. To get started with Meta's hand tracking, we can simply install the Meta XR all-in-one package or just the MetaCore SDK, which will be enough for this video from the Unity Package Manager. Alternatively, you can directly download it from the Unity Asset Store. To know more about installing the new Meta XR SDKs, watch my previous video of setting up the Meta Developer Tools. Meta has made huge improvements in hand tracking since version 55, so definitely make sure to keep your headset up to date and download the latest Meta XR SDK. To set up the hand tracking within our headset, Simply go to Settings, and then Movement Tracking, and then Enable Hand and Body Tracking. After going through the short tutorial, we are able to adjust some more settings. Make sure the Auto Switch Sensitivity is set to High for more seamless transition between controllers and hands. Back in Unity, we have set up a simple scene. Let's add a regular OVR camera rig to it. Make sure that when you are searching for it in the Project window, that you check Search in the Packages which is where most assets from Meta are located nowadays. Let's drag it into our scene and check a few things. First, we want to make sure that our device is supported by checking its checkbox under Target Devices. We set the Tracking Origin Type to Floor Level and scroll down to the Quest Features. Here we just make sure that we enable the hand tracking support and we set the hand tracking frequency to High. There is no difference between high and max values, as both track hands at high frequency. Lastly, the hand tracking version should be on version 2. Next, on the OVR camera rig, let's expand everything until both controller anchors and search for the OVR hand prefab in our project. We add one prefab for each hand. Make sure the mesh renderer is active, and on the skinned mesh renderer, you can assign any material you want for our hands. The default will just be a black material from Meta. The last thing we need to do is change the hand type on the right hand to hand right, which will adjust also the OVR skeleton and OVR mesh to the right hand for us. Let's give this a try now, and we should see our hands in our experience now. As you can see, the tracking is fairly fast and accurate. Just make sure that you are always testing in good lighting conditions. For our next use case, we want to use our hands to interact with physics. Therefore, we set up a cube in front of us. Make sure that you add a rigid body to it to be able to interact with it. Lastly, let's add any material that we want. Once that's done, we look at our hands. And under OVR Skeleton, we select the Enable Physics Capsules checkbox. Alright, now let's give it a try. As you can see, we can now push our cube around and the physics capsules are accurately placed where our fingers are. Let's add a little more exciting physics example. For this, we create a new particle effect in our scene. We reduce the size and speed of the particle, as well as adjust the radius from which they are fired. Very importantly, under rendering, we select mesh as render mode to spawn cubes. Here we can also assign a material for the cubes. We then adjust the rate over time to spawn less cubes. Lastly, we need to enable the collision and select world under collision type. Perfect. Now let's give this a try. As you can see, we are able to impact even the particles as they are flying through the air. Our hands physics capsules are able to move and intercept particles. Let's move on to the second part of this tutorial, where we implement two scripts that let us interact with any game objects using our hands, and specifically our pinch interaction. To be able to interact with objects, we need a stable pointing direction from a tracked hand. OVR hand provides a pointer pose so that pointing interactions can be consistent across MetaQuest apps. It indicates the starting point and position of the pointing ray in the tracking space. 
let's create an empty game object where we will attach our behaviors to later. We will first create a script called hand pointer where we will use the pointer pose to determine the direction the user is pointing. We will then use this direction to also draw a visual line for debugging purposes. Let's take a look at the script in more detail. First, we declare a public variable of type OVR hand called right hand, which is giving us a reference to the hand where we want to later detect the pointer and pinch from. We then declare a property of type game object called current target, which will be assigned automatically when we hover an object as our target with our pointer. It has a public get function because later our pinch logic has to access this property to know which game object was pointed at. We want to avoid making all variables public since it is bad practice. We then declare four serialized private fields. The first one is a boolean called show raycast, which will allow us to enable or disable the visible raycast of our hands directly in the inspector. Then we assign a highlight color, which is red by default, and which basically is the color our game object changes to once it has been pointed at. We then also declare a layer to filter which game objects should be pointable. Lastly, we need a reference to the line renderer, which is our visual raycast line later. Next, we have two private variables where we cache the original color and the mesh renderer of the game object. We will be pointing at to later access them more efficiently. In the update method, we will call a new method with the name check hand pointer with the right hand parameter. This method is then going to check if the raycast that is being projected in the direction of our OVR pointer pose is hitting any game object that is on the layer that we later specify in the inspector. If so, we check if the target that we currently point at is a new target. If so, we assign the new object that we hit to the current target property. We then fetch the renderer of the current target and get the color of its material, which we then set to the highlight color. After we hit an object on the desired layer, we can call a method with the name update ray visualization, where we can then optionally show a visual line coming from the hand. If we don't hit an object on our selected layer, and we already hit an object before, it means that we just left the object with our ray, and in this case we set its color back to its original color, and then set the current target to null, making space for the next object we will hit. Now finally, in the update ray visualization method, we can check if show raycast, which we can change in the inspector is true, which means we want to show the ray in our game. If so, we enable the line renderer and set its start and end position to the point of pointer position of the hand and the position where the raycast hit our target. If we then hit something, we want to color the line renderer green, and if not, we color it red. If we set show raycast to false in the inspector, we simply want to disable the line renderer. Perfect guys, that's it for the most difficult part of this tutorial. Let's go back to Unity and set this up. Let's first create a new layer called interactable and then assign it to the cube. Next, we assign the hand pointer script to the hand manager. Here, we first assign our right hand prefab. Then we want to enable the raycast to see it during our gameplay for now. We can then change the highlight color to anything we want. It doesn't have to be red. Next, we select the layer that we want to detect, which will be the interactable layer that we just created. And then lastly, we set up a new line renderer component by adjusting its width and assigning a material to it. We then reference it to our script and are ready to finally test our logic. As you can see now, the raycast is perfectly in the direction of our hand pointer, which allows us to accurately detect objects. When we detected an object, our line turns green, otherwise it turns red. We can also run the same experience without the visible line by simply disabling it in the inspector. If we now test, we still can see that the cube is correctly highlighted, but we don't have to use the line renderer if we don't want to. Back in Unity, let's look at the second and last script, the hand pinch detector. Here we need a reference to the hand pointer script that we created before as well as a reference to two sounds we want to play later, one for when the object is being selected and another for when it is unselected. We then have four private variables, one bool to know if the fingers have been pinched, another bool to know if the fingers are pinching at the moment, a float to know about the pinch strength, and a value from meta that indicates if the confidence of detecting a pinch is currently low or high. In the update method, like before, 
we will call another method and name it checkpinch, and give it the right hand, which we can reference from our previous hand pointer script, so we don't have to assign it again. In this method, we will use three amazing methods from Meta. To determine the pinch strength, we can simply call hand.getFingerPinchStrength, which will give us a value between 0 and 1, when the index finger in this case is fully pressed down. We know if the finger is pinching by literally calling hand.getFingerIsPinching. And then, to know with what confidence our device is detecting our gesture, we can call hand.getFingerConfidence, which will give us either high or low. Then, if we hover over a target object, we would like to have some visual feedback as to how strongly we are pinching. For this, I set the value of the metallic property of the material to the value of the pinch strength, which will make the object slightly darker and more shiny the harder the pinch is performed. In the next if statement, we want to not only know if we selected a new target, but also if we are currently pinching and if the confidence is high. If so, we set the has pinched bool to true and play the pinch sound. Alternatively, if we have already performed a pinch and then let go, or in other words, are not currently pinching anymore, we set the has pinched bool to false and play the release sound. Now, let's go back to Unity for the last time and set this up. We first assign an audio source to the object itself. Make sure to uncheck play on awake and then set the spatial blend to 3D for a more immersive experience. Then on the hand manager, let's assign our hand pinch detector and assign our hand pointer. Lastly, you can assign any audio clips that you want. I took some clips from the meta interaction samples. And that's it. Let's give this last demo a try. As you can see, the more we bring our fingers together into a pinch interaction, the darker the shade of the material gets until we perform an actual pinch, which is going to set the metallic value all the way to 1 and play a sound. When we then let go of the pinch, the material changes back, and another sound plays. Alright guys, that's it. I hope you learned a lot today again. And again, if you'd like to support me, please leave a like or subscribe to this channel and check out my Patreon. If you have any questions, join our Discord channel. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.